Welcome to Lola's Frugal Life Podcast. If you're on a mission to be more frugal with both your time and money, you're in the right place. In this podcast, we talk about topics that help enhance living a frugal lifestyle. The goal is to save time and money where we can so that we can use the rest on what matters most to us. We talk a lot about both time and money management so that we can waste as little as possible on both. We do this while also embracing a progress over perfection mindset. If that sounds good to you, then please stick around for the latest episode right after a few quick words from our sponsor. Families have a lot going on. Let Ollie help manage the mental load with new cognitive help supplements for everyone four and up, like delicious Lolly Focus Pops or Lolly Mellow Pops for kids. And for parents, try three new Brainy Chews to help you focus, chill out, or get energized. Find these cognitive health buddies for the whole fam at ollie.com. That's O L L Y.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Lola's Frugal Life podcast. Um, today, before we get into the couple of topics that I have, um, quick life update. I don't have a life, to- life update to share. Um, that's my update. Everything's pretty much same as it's been. Um, still focusing on finishing up senior year, prom, senior picnic, all that kind of stuff. So not really much going on that's new. Um, but I do have a loving lately that I definitely would like to share. And that is the TripIt app. It's it's one word, um, trip, like the word, the, cap, the way it's written, it's capitalized with a T and then capitalized with an I, but it's all one word, TripIt. And I'm working on planning a vacation right now. I've used this app before, um, but I really, really love this app for planning a vacation because you can really um, detail out what you're doing every day if you're the type of person that likes to do that. If you're not the type of person that likes to do that much detail, you don't have to use it for that either. You can just use it to plot out your basic things that you need, like what hotel you're staying at, what your reservation number is. Um, It's really great. Like you put in um, where you're staying and it has your, it'll link everything in there. Like you can have like the phone number for the hotel, um, the address. If you click on the address, it'll open up the GPS so you can go straight there. Um, It'll have the website. You can add in PDFs or photos if you have like a confirmation that you want to add. Um, Anything like that, you can put it in there. It's all sorted by date. You can have multiple dates for your trip. Um, You can put in restaurants you want to go to or, um, you know, some some places you'd like to go to. Um, Just whatever you're going to be doing on the various days of your trip, you can put that all in there. And one thing that's really cool about it is um, if you book like a hotel, for example, there's an email that you forward it to. um, I forget what it's called. It's like plans at TripIt or something like that. It tells you how to do it. But if you get like a confirmation email from a hotel, you can forward that email to the app basically you send it to this email and it populates into the app and it'll put all of your information in there automatically so you don't have to type it in it'll show you like the check-in time the confirmation number the hotel website um, all of that information will automatically show up in there and um, it's just really cool because i just i love to have things organized like that and it lets me kind of visually see um you know where we're going to be easily access um you know the address, um, any kind of information I might need. It's just kind of all in one spot. So I am definitely loving that lately. And I love to see the whole trip coming together. And I can see like what days I have fully planned and what days we might have a little bit more free time. So that is definitely something that I am loving right now. As far as reading, um, I'm not going to do all of the reading aspects that I did in the first um, time I did this new format of the podcast just because I just think there's too much and I'm not going to always share what I'm reading in digital format because as I've mentioned before it takes me so long to read a digital format book because I literally only read like sometimes a couple of minutes a day so I don't want to keep telling you for like months that I'm still reading the same book I'll let you know when I finish it Um, and I don't really have anything that interesting on my holds right now so if I have anything I'll tell you about it later but I do want to share that I just um finished reading the book The Wish by Nicholas Sparks. 
Um, this book has a 4.34 rating on Goodreads. I wasn't aware of the fact that the book takes place around Christmas when I started it. Um, I hadn't really recently read the description. It was just something that I had on my holds list because I must have heard somewhere that it was a good book. Um, so at some point I put it on my holds list and it happened to become available. So um, I listened to it. But it would definitely be a nice book to listen to during the holidays. Um, the book is about a woman who's just learned she has very little time left to live. So when I first... Um, heard like when I first realized I was like I don't know if I really want to listen to this because I thought it might be too sad and you know whatever um, or you know obviously if that might be something you're sensitive to based on anything going on in your life right now just to let you know that that is kind of what the book is all is centered around um, but what happens is she basically basically shares her life story with a friend that she works with and um, like I said at first I thought this would be too depressing but I actually ended up really really loving this book and there's a really nice twist at the end so I would definitely check that out if that sounds like something interesting to you um, as far as what I'm listening to right now it's um, I'm listening to The Mother's Promise by Sally Hepworth I've listened to a few of her books in the past and I've always really liked them um, this book has a 4.16 rating on Goodreads it's basically about a mom and her 15 year old daughter um, who've always kind of lived as, as a family of two. And um, the, the daughter struggles with social anxiety. Her mother is very protective of her. Um, she falls ill and has a bad prognosis. And the story goes on from there. Um, so it's going it, to, I think it's kind of about um, women kind of coming to ha together um, in a time of critical need or something like that. But it's, it's really good so far. Um, so, you know, as I, as I said, I try to give you like I'll try to give you like a brief description, but you can always look these up on Goodreads or Amazon or whatever to see if it's something that you might like. Um, so that is reading favorite meal this week. Um, my favorite meal that I made this week is was um, brats, grilled chicken, thighs, and pasta salad. <laughs> I love cooking on the grill in the summer, and pasta salad makes a great side because you can always. Um, just make it like ahead of time and then when it's time for dinner all you have to do is throw the meat on the grill and then you're ready to eat so I really love making those summer type meals um, so that's um, that was my favorite meal this week one one other thing I wanted to talk about um, which was part of the title of this episode is deciding once on potluck meals so I'm sure that many of you have listened to the lazy genius podcast or listened to some of her books um, one of the principles that she talks about involves deciding once it's about finding those things that you're always making decisions about that you could decide once on and use that decision for all future times that this decision needs to be made um, then no decision needs to be made because you've already decided once. So I recently decided to apply this logic to holiday potluck meals. Often when I get invited to a family gatherings for a holiday, I struggle a little bit to decide what I should bring and assume I'm not going to ask. Um, I mean, I'm assuming that I'm not asked to bring something in particular. Um, but if someone just says, you know, what would you like to bring? I kind of sometimes struggle with figuring out like what I want to bring and this isn't anything new it happens every single year so I thought why don't I just decide once on this and when each holiday comes I'll already know what I'm gonna bring so I started to make a list on my phone and I jotted down the holiday name and what I brought with me and assuming that the dish that I brought was liked by enough people to keep bringing it in the future I just put that meal down and that's what I'm gonna bring each holiday going forward so when the holiday rolls around I just have to look at my list and see what it is that I'm gonna be bringing and I have no more time spent on making decisions every single year every time that holiday comes up so a couple of things I have on my list so far are um, this like cheesy potato bake that I made for Mother's Day that was really good and then I made a Capri salad for Memorial Day and that was that went over well also so I'm going to be um, those are gonna be my things that I bring for those holidays I do already have a couple um, for Christmas and thanks well Thanksgiving we do at my house and I kind of have a standard menu for that but um, Christmas I have Christmas Eve actually I have something that I make and then I have to figure out the rest of the holidays but I figured that as they come along I'll just jot them down and then I'll kind of create this list to have available um, for myself so that each time the holiday comes I'm not rethinking and stressing out over what I want to uh, make and obviously this principle can be applied to many other things not just what I'm using it for in this situation um, you know another example of how you can use the decide once is say if um, you do teacher gifts maybe if you have kids and they need gifts for the teachers you could decide once 
everyone gets this gift, whether it's whatever, I don't know, a gift card to a certain place or, or whatever it might be. You just decide once that when this situation comes, that's what I'm going to buy and you never have to think about it again. So I really love to apply that principle when I can. Okay, so another topic that I wanted to talk about today is managing and saving money for busy people. So do you ever feel like you're too busy to stay on top of your finances? If you only had more time, you'd be able to manage your money better. Um, I hear people say so often that they just don't have time to stay on top of their finances. And when we lead busy lives, it really might feel like there's no time to manage our money the way we might like to. But in reality, it really doesn't take that much time to manage your money. Plus, it will allow you to free your mind of the stress that comes with not really understanding um, if you have the money needed to cover your expenses and things that you'd like to do. So it's worth the time and it's really not that much time. There's some things that you can do that take little time that will really help make a difference in either um, staying on top of your finances or saving money. Um, so one of, the, one of the things is doing a daily check-in. In like five or 10 minutes, you can log into your bank and credit card accounts and take a quick look at your spending. Check to make sure no charges came through that you were not expecting. I, I find it so hard to believe just because of my nature and the way I am when I hear people say, I didn't realize I was being charged for this service for the last year or whatever. And I'm like, how could you not know? But I get it. A lot of people don't take the time to check. I know every dollar that comes out of our account just because that's just the way I am. And I don't expect everyone to be that way. Um, but if you just take a few minutes to just glance at the transactions that posted the day before, you might catch something that you didn't realize was coming out of your account. And you could take a quick glance at how much you're spending so that you can be more informed of where your money's going. And if you keep a detailed budget, take a couple of minutes to compare your activity to your budget. It takes much less time to check in a few minutes on a regular basis than trying to get caught up after a week or two or definitely after a month. It's difficult to remember what you spent money on yesterday, let alone a few weeks ago. So the more frequently you can do this, it leaves less room for wondering what that purchase was at Target, because I know that's happened to me before. Um, you know, any, any purchases you make, it's often difficult to remember what they were for once any time passes. So if you take a quick look on a regular basis, that's, that's really helpful. One way that busy people can save money is by ordering groceries online. If you find yourself spending extra money at the grocery store on impulse purchases, consider ordering your groceries online for pickup or delivery. One of the best things about ordering your groceries online is that you'll know how much you're going to spend before you check out. So if you go over on your grocery budget, you can always make some changes to your cart before you go actually pick up your groceries. And there are options to filter your search by price and by what's on sale. Um, some apps let you see what you've purchased in the past that's on sale this week. So that can help you with planning your meals around what's at a lower cost. And not only only can online grocery orders help you stick to your budget they save a lot of time that would be spent walking up and down the grocery aisle so you save time and money with this option um, you can also put order your order together over time um, when you have a few minutes to spare so that you don't have to sit there and do everything at once so that's definitely a good way to save money for people that are busy of course, I have to mention meal planning because I mention this all the time, but knowing what you're going to make for dinner drastically reduces the temptation to order out. At the end of a busy day, most of us are suffering from decision fatigue. Um, ordering out can feel like such a better option than the idea of having to figure out what to make for dinner. But if you've already decided what you're going to have for dinner um, when you are in a better frame of mind, you can rely on that plan and not have to make decisions about dinner when you're already burned out from the day. So knowing what you're going to make saves you from having to make another decision at the end of the day, and it'll save you lots of money that might have been spent on takeout. It's also much easier to just take out what you need for dinner that night in the morning when you have a meal plan, because who wants to wake up and have to look around in the freezer and try and decide what to make tonight? So there are so many benefits to meal planning with saving time and money. Um, creating sinking funds is another one of my favorite tips, and this is this is doable for everybody, no matter how busy you are. Um, sinking funds are just a simple way to protect yourself from future budget overages. Take a few minutes to think about those things that might come up that you would have, would have been unprepared for in the past. These can be things like auto repairs or regular maintenance, holidays, birthday gifts, pet care, going out to eat, travel, insurance payments, property taxes, pretty much anything that you would like to um, regularly put money aside for. So figure out what those things are and then each week um, or every two weeks, if you want to do it based on how you get paid, 
you know, everyone gets paid on a different cycle. Take a portion of money and stick it aside. Stick it aside for those expenses. When those come up, you'll have money put aside already for them and you won't have to figure out where that money is gonna come from. And then one last tip on saving money for busy people is when you go out to pick up something, well, actually, this isn't just for busy people, this is for anybody. But when you go out to pick up something, don't grab a shopping cart if you're truly going into the store to buy one thing. When you have a shopping cart in your hands, it's so easy and tempting to just throw things in it. Put yourself on a mission to just get the item you came in for and get out of the store and celebrate to yourself when you walk back out into the parking lot with just that one item that you came to get. So one other thing I want to talk about, um, which is a Pinterest article I saw that was called seven ways to get back to basics with frugal living. And I think that it's really great to kind of just reset ourselves um, occasionally if we feel like We've kind of gotten out of line with, you know, our good habits or whatever's going on, or we just maybe had a situation come up and we just feel like we need a reset. So I wanted to share these seven um, tips with you that this article um, included and just kind of give my opinion on them. So the first one was make your own food. Of course, you guys know I'm all about making your own food. It doesn't mean you can't order out occasionally. We all have those times where we just want to celebrate or we just are just too busy of a day where there's just literally no time, um, you know, or we just need a need a break or whatever. So of course you can order out, but the more you can cook and make your own food, it's healthier generally, and it definitely saves a lot of money and it helps you use up the food that you already have on hand. So I definitely agree with that one. And the next um, tip they have is to use every last drop. So I definitely agree with this to a certain extent. For the most part, I really do try and use every last drop. Um, recently, I've had to let myself throw out the Bath and Body Works um, hand pump soaps occasionally with a little bit left in them because they last for so, so long. And I just, <laughs> there's just like little bits of soap coming out and I'm trying to like, you know, get every last bit out. And I'm like, I just can't do this anymore. So there's been an occasion where I, have thrown them out with like a tiny bit left but i mean i really pretty much do use them up but if you can use up what you're purchasing you're not going to go out and buy more before you actually need it so that definitely saves money using up everything that you purchased before you go out and buy more um so oh so another thing i do that with actually is with the shampoo and conditioner that my um daughter use so they don't once once the um pumps get like down to the bottom they just kind of like have trouble getting the shampoo and conditioner out so i wind up giving them brand new ones to use and then i take theirs and bring them downstairs and i use them that may or may not work for you but if you can find ways to use up things um and you make things last a little bit longer that'll obviously definitely save you money because like i said that you're not buying them sooner um another uh, number three that they had on the list was don't waste energy, water, or money each month. So of course, energy, everybody knows you want to try to save where you can, um, turning off lights, not wasting water, things like that. So I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, but the one uh, other thing they talked about was not wasting money as part of that item number was cutting subscriptions. So this is always a good um thing to look at because sometimes we get subscriptions, especially there's so many different TV services or, um, you know, maybe you have a gym membership or some other type of membership and it might just come out every month and maybe you think, you know, you value it, but then if you really think about it, maybe sometimes you don't and you can always add something back. You know, if you cancel, I don't know, like Hulu or something, it's not like they're not going to turn it right back on if you decide you miss it for some reason. So maybe just really kind of think about um, the subscriptions that you have for whatever those things might be that you're paying for and decide if they're still a value to you or if maybe you want to just cut them for a period of time. Like we get certain channels, um, certain subscriptions at only at certain times of the year because um, for football games, we can only get certain local channels on um, a couple of specific um, subscriptions. So we got them during that time we needed them and then we canceled them right after. So just consider, you know, like maybe in summer you're not watching as much TV. So maybe you cancel a subscription during the summer and then in the fall you bring it back. So just because you have a subscription doesn't mean you have to always have that subscription turned on. So I think that's definitely a good one. 
to take a look at. Um, the next item in the list of seven, item number four, was pay attention to the small things. Um, you know, are you in the habit of saying, oh, it's only $2, it's only $5, it's only this, it's only that. All of those things add up. They definitely add up. Generally, I kind of try to um, focus on the bigger things as far as seeing what I can cut and where I can save money. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not kind of, my, my, way of looking at this is more about, am I spending money on something I value? So if it's in my budget and I value it, I'm not so much thinking about whether or not um, the dollar amount that I'm spending, it's more about, was this something that I plan to spend and is it something I value? So I'm not very nit nitpicky about dollar amounts specifically, I'm more nitpicky about, am I spending money on something I care about? So I guess you could look at it both ways, but that's my thoughts on that. Um, number five, they had stretch your comfort zone. Um, they just, you know, they kind of talk about doing things a little bit differently. Um, maybe you used to, um, have a cleaning service like me. I used to have, um, a, a house, um, uh, house, yeah, a house cleaner, I guess. I don't know. I couldn't think of the term for it. I used to have a woman that would come clean my house every two weeks while my kids were younger. And I loved it. I mean, it was really great to have someone coming and cleaning the house every two weeks. I mean, obviously we still had to keep the house neat. We had to run around the day before and make sure everything was put away so that the house was in order for them to come in and clean. Um, but once my um, son started going to college, he wound up not staying with college, he went to electrician school, but regardless, when college years were starting for us, um, I, I really thought about it and I'm like, can I really afford to, to do this? Or should I put that money um, aside to, for, to further the college savings that we had? Should I be saving this money aside for extra expenses that might come up related to college? And I thought about like cleaning and that's when I actually started learning about all the fly lady stuff. And I got really into it actually and trying to figure out how to manage it and how to do this cleaning. And um, I said, you know what, I definitely can handle this. It's definitely not going to be perfect. It's definitely not going to be as shiny and sparkly as cleaning day was when I would come home and the cleaning people had just left. Um, but I'm able to manage it. And I stepped out of my comfort zone and I was able to save a lot of money by not having someone come clean our home anymore. So again, it's values based. To me, it was more valuable to me to put the money for potential future college expenses than it was for cleaning your house at the time. So I'm certainly not saying do not have a house cleaner if you have one and you really value that because it can be a great service to have. But just kind of thinking about what you're paying for and if it's something that you might be able to do or if it's something that you really don't need to have done necessarily. So stepping out of your comfort zone and just kind of um, you know, figuring out if there's other ways you can do things to save some money. For number six, they talk about resetting your spending. Um, just kind of thinking about what you're spending money on, maybe doing a no spending challenge. I've never really done a no spending challenge because I feel like there's just always something that comes up that I need to buy. But I know they're very, very popular. Um, but if you're struggling with kind of figuring out where your spending priorities are and how you're spending money, it, it might be a good idea to do a no spending challenge because it'll kind of really make you question every time you're about to make a purchase and think about where you're spending your money. And maybe it can kind of let you see um, better uh, where your money's going. So that might be a good way to do it. Um, you know, of course, tracking your tracking your money to a budget. If you don't have a budget yet, even just try, starting to track your ex expenses and see where your money's going and just kind of take a good look and see where you can kind of make some changes is a good way to do a reset of your spending also. And then number seven, which of course is probably one of the most popular topics at Frugal Living individuals talk about is knowing your why. Um, many of us have turned to frugal living intentionally because we want to focus on our why. We're focused on making sure that we take what we have as far as financial resources and as I do in my podcast too, time, our money and time, and make sure we're using them as wisely as we can. We all have limits. Some limits are higher than others, but regardless of where you're at financially, it still feels really good if you're of the frugal living mindset to, to really have um, the most that you can for the things that you value with what you have and not just kind of spending money 
randomly as things come up, but really thinking about, is that really important to me or would that money be better used on something else that I, that I really value? Like, what is the purpose? What is your why? Is it um, to, to spend more time with family? Is it to travel more in your life? Is it to, to live home and, and garden all the time? Like whatever it is, whatever is you, it, whatever it is that you really value in your life, um, that's what you want to make sure that your time management and your money management is focused on. So that is, those are all of the items that they talked about in this article. Oh, that I like to tell you where it's from too. And you can always, I always post all these articles on my Pinterest board too. I have a Lola's Frugal Life Pinterest board and I have it by topic. So this one, I believe I posted to the Frugal Living um, board, I'm sure. Uh, so if you ever want to go look at the articles, they're there. But this was, um, the, the website that this article was on is two, two pennies fireplace.com. I don't have any specific people that I follow um, necessarily. I have a couple people that I follow, but I just kind of like to, when an article pops up that looks like um, interesting to me or something that I'd like to share with you, that's what I'm doing now. So I thought that was a really good one. Um, it's always good to kind of just get back to basics on our frugal living. So that's the last topic that I had for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I thank you so much for listening and I will see you back here next week. So thank you for checking in for this podcast episode. And don't forget, you can always email me with any questions or suggestions at lolasfrugallife at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Lola's Frugal Life, And you can find a blog post for most of my episodes and definitely all of my meal plan episodes at lolasfrugallife.com. You can also join our private listeners group at facebook.com slash groups slash lolasfrugallife. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen from. And I would love it if you would screenshot the show and tag me on Instagram so I could see your listening. Also, if you can please take a couple of seconds to rate and review the podcast, those ratings and reviews are what help the show come up better in search results so that other people can find this podcast. So that will really help me in growing my audience. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you have an awesome day.